So first things first, Sasha, how are you? I'm fine so far, as far as as good as it can be during these times, you know. Enough. Well, has it been difficult? Because obviously, uh, kind of half your job is missing at the moment. So, so has the past year been been a big change for you? Yeah, I mean, we've been lucky in the sense of that we uh, had an album finished and that you know we, we kind of had just to postpone the release and everything. But then on the other hand, we had time to work on um the single and mixes and you know also we had more time for right. finishing the album and then we had also more time to going into like video shoot and stuff like that you know so so yeah it's 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 kind of fine but on the other hand um i miss the band and i miss to go on tour of course and and the yeah. fans and and so yeah i just wonder how that goes in the near future <laughs> so yeah well before we talk about uh, Halloween and the new record. I'd like to jump back a little bit uh, and delve into your own background. Now, when do you think you found your voice as a composer, as a songwriter? Um, actually, I, th I think it started right before I ch I've joined Halloween. Okay. You know, because like in the projects I've been working before, um, I always wanted to write songs, but somehow it. it um, I weren't allowed to, or it didn't mm -hmm. just happen, or for some reason. And then um, joining Halloween, it was kind of a, a job description, as 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 Mikey said. So he said, like, yeah, if you if you're here, and you know what it's about, we're going to record an album, and we wanted to try out if you can be a part of this. But um, aside from playing guitar, you should be able to write songs. And I'm like, yeah, listen, well, if recorded a couple of ideas just listen to them and then he and also Andy they they just liked it and mm. so but of course it was developing over time more and more because um seeing people like Vicky and and Andy being such incredible songwriters um you know they raised the bar very high so mm. so for me it was like okay uh, there's a lot of stuff to learn here and um yeah so um it got even better during the time um, with making albums with them, you know. Yeah, but it's interesting how you how you speak about it because was it if, even if I uh, go through the track listing of the new album, it's all different kinds of writers. Everybody kind of pitches in. So was that always expected within the band that everybody contributes on all levels, kind of? Well, um, I would say it's it it's it's the big big strength of of Halloween that you have a lot of songwriters. I mm -hmm. mean that's not very common like most right. bands you have like one or two people um and for for me it was kind of interesting that halloween um was doing albums that way and you can he hear even when i got like the whole back catalog when i joined in in 2003 for me it was like wow every album is so different and then at the same time none of the albums sounds boring at all or it doesn't sound like there's like one songwriter doing it all and kind of re-repeating what they did before so it was always kind of unexpected stuff happening right even even with like the direction of certain albums and and then um i, I remember the, the first time when when Waiki and i talked because we like in the beginning when i joined the band it was the both of us having the most spending the most time together and i i figured that all of them they have a different background they're not like oh we want to be another um black sabbath or we don't want to be another iron maiden or whatever so they they did their own thing and they're all having different influences so for instance you have um kai who is obviously very much influenced by judas priest of course and then you have Vicky, who is listening like to music from the 60s you go and, and 50s e even you know like he's a big beatles fan and he loves deep purple and he loves like german schlager and all those things that's where the big melodies come from right, right. And, and and classical music and stuff like that and then you have um um marcus who is a big punk fan you mm -hmm. know he would listen to ramones and all these like 70s and, and 80s punk stuff and you can clearly hear that in the songwriting too, and and I like that. It, it's it's diversity and and it's, it makes it more interesting. I, sure. I think. Sure. And now, uh, "Rabbit Don't Come Easy" is the first album you contributed to, and like yeah. like you said, it's it's uh, 
I'm sure it's daunting when you join an established band, but was there something on that record then that you were proud of, that something that you added uh, on that record, maybe a song or maybe just even the guitar line or something? Yeah, I mean, being able to even contribute songs to the album was a, was a big deal for me because mm -hmm. just, just imagine I was 25 years old right. by that time. So, and, and the whole thing didn't, didn't come expected, you know, the whole thing was quite unexpected. So from the day when, Charlie Bauerfeind called me up um, and then he told me um, Michael will call me up in the next couple of days and it's it's going to be Halloween and if and they're interested in working with me so and I didn't expect that to happen because I was out of the metal scene in in that time you know I was like um, doing studio work and mm -hmm. and and writing um, pop music and doing other kind of you know um, sorts of things so and then the whole thing was like a like a fast train like running through my life you know and then uh, like going back to okay no there's this old school heavy metal band needing a guitar player and then at the same time figuring out what's what's very special about them that they need another songwriter as well and then also there's this personal side that the, the most important thing in the beginning was that we get along well because right. they went through we we weird times you know and sure, sure. so they, they wanted to have someone they can with social skills so they can go on tour with that kind of guy you know and that's what we needed to figure out if that works and especially between michael and me who were um, the guitar team from them you know sure well that's very interesting then because uh, if we fast forward a little bit to i think it was around 2016 when um you kind of reunited with some of the members from the past. I, I mean, obviously you've heard about them and um, maybe in, uh, you've spoken to them at festivals or, or in however, but um, what were your expectations in a sense, working with these these guys that were in the band, but you never really played yeah. with? Well, well, the good thing is that, um, I mean, I know Kai for, for years. Okay, I, okay. I, 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 have even, I have even known him before I joined Halloween because um, when I was um, producing with Freedom Call, we we went went to his studio. So, ah, okay. Um, so from time to time, he would stop by and say hi or whatever. And then also Dirk from Gamma, he 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 was a keyboard player on a Freedom Call tour. So like you know, it's like a big family of of musicians who oh, okay, okay. who who knew each other somehow. And and then of course over over the years, then we did like Hellish Rock tour mm -hmm. and Hellish Rock two. Um, with Gamma Ray together, so it was like a big family happening, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we figured that something like that could could um, start off great, you know, with with Kai together. And there were, of course, conversations about this. And so, well, I remember that Kai and I we went to a to a, a bar in in Japan once, and I told him, "Listen, if that ever happens." Um, Everything's gonna be fine, you know. I'm I'm not having a big issue with playing rhythm guitar, and you playing the the old songs s solos and stuff, you, you know, like just to clear out some space there, you know, like right. there's not, nothing nothing weird happening from my side. And then um, and and it turned out like on the tour that um, it just um, clicked, you know, like even we like in Doctor Steen we would have put in some other solo parts so it's like three guitar solos in the middle and stuff like that and then there are other times when when like the legendary duo um Vicky and Kai go go on the catwalk and play their solo thing and Marcus and I would be like the rhythm section mm -hmm. you know so um yeah uh, it, it sounds kind of too boring if I say <laughs> like it, it went great you know it was a lot of work to do of course because you have two more people in the band sure but it was totally worth it. And then I have to add, um, especially with Michael Kiske, I have a great relationship, you know, like he's for me, he's like a, a big addition uh, personally, not only as a singer, mm -hmm. but also um, as a person to join, rejoining the band and being making the family bigger. And, and I remember the first meeting we had um, with our management and the whole band together and Kai and, and Michael and and we would end up sitting together next to next to each other, he and I, and we would talk for hours about Elvis Presley and okay. and spiritual things, and you know, like it was there was an instant connection, and and so I was quite happy. I was like, wow, that's I, I knew Kai for a long time, and I know 
um, it's going to be great with Michael Kiske and yeah, and, and the rest is, is history then, I think. Yeah, and I also read about the new record because obviously you have now three main vocalists in a way that there were no egos, that nobody uh, kind of felt left out or was jealous or whatever. That yeah. It went very naturally. How come, in a way? What do you attribute this to? Yeah, well, well I, I wouldn't say it's equal less because when you have like these strong characters and, and like everybody of us is able to write songs, everybody is, of us is able to form a band <laughs> sure. recruit people and, and do sure. albums, you know. So, of course, there's there's some ego involved, but I would say um, I wouldn't call it ego less, but it was mature. It was like mm. very mature. And, and, you know, to be successful and staying together as a successful band, the most important thing is that you that you make space for each other and respect each other. And I would say um, there was a lot of respect um, happening between each other. And and also I gotta say, especially um, Andy and and Michael, they get along very well from the beginning. Okay. You know, like when they went into the like the live show, they went they went like, oh, what do you wanna sing? Oh, the part is better for my voice and that part. You know, that would be great if you would sing that. And they were like so the, the harmony between them. It's astonishing, you know, so there was never an ego thing between those two, okay. you know, and then, of course, guitarists are guitarists. Of course, you're 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 um, if you have different opinions, you you might fight for some things, you know, I mean, we didn't want to make like a lame record just mm. to be be friends, you know, right, we right. of course wanted to to ha do the best we can in, in that period. And then, of course, you have we had a pre-production for a long time and we of course, we had discussions. If, how we want to have parts and stuff, but in a very mature and respectful way. Mm -hmm. And so you could call it egoless, but but of course everybody is pushing his idea somehow. Sure. And and I think it's really about the ability to make space for another person, you know. And then, like you said, then because I was my next question was going to be, well, why do you think it now works? Because like you said, there has been friction between members in the past, and then now it works. But like you said, maybe it's maturation, just knowing that that, uh, yeah, just shouting at each other doesn't work in a way. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think there, it's it's two things. Um, I mean, one for sure is like growing older and 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 then also the tour that we had like a very mm -hmm. successful tour mm -hmm. which is also like giving you a big push you know sure. like saying okay well we should do an album together because that this works you know but then on the other thing is i'm i'm just guessing because if i'm i'm thinking about myself how i went down with things when i was younger when you were like a young man or young male person um, you want to explore the world and you want to show here I am, you know, and you're and you're like you're having like this this big chest drumming behavior, you know, and and that kind of I think that goes away over time, you know, because then when you did it, you recorded albums, you went on tour and, you know, you're you settled down a little bit and, and you know who you are and you know who the others are. And, and you know, I think that stops somehow a little bit mm. so that you don't. You don't want to be always like upfront, you know, and and that comes with age. I think that's the positive thing about aging that you get more mature and and you're you're thinking more about the next steps, you know. Right. And when you're young, you're kind of wild and you want to explore and and you want to just yell at everybody. Here I am, you know. And that of for, for sure for young, a lot of young bands that is giving some conflict. I think, mm. you know. Especially yeah. for a young band, if I was, if I would imagine, I mean, for me, like my career went up gradually, like on a, in a in a not so slow pace, but but like step by step. I didn't mm -hmm. come like out of the school and and went like gold records, you know. <laughs> right, right. So, but for Halloween, that was the case basically, you know, like they they just finished school and then like they were all over the place. And if I would imagine how I would have been 18, 20, 20 right. years old, something like that. I don't know how I would have taken that, you know, like, the, and then also it's been the eighties, you know, it's, <laughs> it's also like a different period of time. And, and I think people went just nuts, you know, so, <laughs> so yeah. 
It, it was part of, uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of those rock and roll auto, autobiographies. And I, I feel like it's, it was also, like you say, kind of part of the time when you're young, when you're early 20s. And, and like you said, in the 80s, that there were no real limits, especially when you were a superstar. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah. it's, it's uh, yeah, I can imagine that. I, yeah. cause for instance, I've always found that people gave Justin Bieber a lot of shit. I mean, I don't like his music, but... Imagine being him. Imagine being in his position. How yeah. would you act? I mean, how can you be a normal yeah. person if you're in that situation? So yeah, you you you, you can't. And also, like being a musician and going on tour and everything, it's not a normal life, anyways. Exactly. You know, it's exactly. it's kind of you're being this like big circus family, <laughs> and of course, your life is different from from the life of others. You know, and then and I and I have to admit, of course, if you're like young and this happens, and this happened in the '80s, of course um there's some magic happening too because yes. the way that people are and what i kind of found interest interesting that we that we were able to do it on that record even without it happening in the 80s and even without being like 18 19 years old we it was kind of the spirit though to create something magical there was like with the, the pressure we put on ourselves to to make something really good here um, was big, you know, it was like really mm -hmm. rethinking parts and, and going through the songs. And, and I have to say, especially Kai, he's, he's one of those people who who mm -hmm. is going over and over about over parts again and th rethinking and he's like never happy, <laughs> you know. But that that sometimes can be anno annoying, but on the other hand, that can be also really good because yeah. then you never, you, never, you never go like, oh, that's good enough. You know, so you're, you're always like giving a little bit extra. And and so we, we had this attitude and we wanted to do something special here. And even though it, we we're not that young anymore and even though it was in the 80s, you know. Well, you're still relatively young, right? Because I, I, I look yeah. at, well, when I looked at the ages, you're the youngest of the band, aren't you? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah fair enough. You, you still have time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, and if I if I see now the the really young bands and young musicians and and also guitar players and stuff, I'm going like now I'm like an old dog, you know. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's that's by the way that that's the connection um, Viking and I um, instantly had that we both love love uh, Michael Schenker, you know, mm, and right. stuff like that. So so me being being a um, um, a fourteen fifteen year old. All the other people in school, they would would listen to like the Black Album of Metallica, and they right. would go into Nirvana and going doing the whole grunge thing. And I was listening to old music, you know, like I was kind of this outsider listening like to um, Saga, Toto, Dokken, Queensrÿche, you know. <laughs> I would go like into you know old school music and Michael Schenker, of course, you know. And and so that's a, that's a good thing because then we had an instant connection of. Oh, we like the same stuff, you know. Right, right. So maybe you're an old soul at heart. <laughs> probably, probably, yeah. In that case, yeah. <laughs> well, just a very quick segue before we continue on uh, the Halloween album. Is uh, obviously you have uh, your own work, Palace, uh, with which you released uh, an album, I believe, in 2017. Now, on the album, you also sing. So. Uh, yeah. Do you ever want to sing for Halloween, or is that ever an option, or is that because you have such great singers, that's not really your thing? Yeah. Well, well, I gotta say, um, I did sing on the record um, okay. for um, for best time, like all like the choruses and the whole right. part. Uh, that's okay. my voice. Okay. So, but um, but it just turned out that way because I, I sang the song song on the demo, and and then they went like, well, it sounds great. Why why aren't you doing this part? These parts, you know, it's like just a it just gives gives it some spice but then i have to say i'm not having a rock voice you know i'm not <laughs> a, i'm, not, I'm yeah. not a heavy metal singer and then also i can't compete with andy or or or, or michael you know so um I, I wouldn't do that so um i'm totally like my voice is totally into more of a electronic and and pop direction so it wouldn't make sense and then also i think like it would be too confusing for 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 the fans too you know and then and then I'm thinking I'm I'm already happy that that we kind of solved everything with three singers now. Like people mm -hmm. aren't aren't confused because you have like the Kai Hansen era and then you have the Kiske era and you have the Andy Darius era. And I think there's no there's no need for another era with me singing. <laughs> you know, 
although I like the concept with with bands like Toto, you know, mm -hmm. like everybody's singing kind of and and well, if it's if it's for some parts, it might be fun, but. But yeah, no, because I found that interesting when I listen to Palace, and you you have, do have a good voice, so so I don't know. But it, like you say, it might be a different, two different stylistic. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not a heavy metal singer. That's that's the thing, you know. Like, and that's that's why I'm doing other music where I say, where my voice fits, you know, and and also because I'm having so many different influences, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, you mentioned those different eras of uh, Halloween of the band, um, and am I right in saying that kind of the approach for the album was was kind of combining the old with the new? Yes, of course, because that's what we did on the live show as well, and mm. and that went great. And I, and I have to say, a um, big shout out for Charlie Balfine because he he combined all that. Like I remember the first day we went in to record rec guitar, he said, "What I want, just to let you know." play everything i want like to i want to have all your ideas i want to have everything like you were the sole guitar player on this band just record everything and i want to have the same thing happening from all the other guitar players and then i'll pick when is the magic happening because when i saw your life it was magical this band with three guitars it was just perfect and it, it has some uncertain vibe a, a lot of other bands don't have and i want to transport that into the record i want to have that on the record and i found it pretty clever i was mm -hmm. like wow he's right i mean the whole tour was a dream and the whole tour went went down great you know starting in in mexico and then ending with with rock and rio and and it was just like a big dream and we were like wow this is so good and how are we going to have that on a record you know because you you have all these eras, and and I, I have to say, Andy's era is like the, the longest and the, right. and the biggest, you know. And he's such an such an amazing songwriter too. How would you like combine all that and fulfill people's um, um, expectations as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And then and then Charlie came up with this idea, and I was like, wow, that's that's brilliant. Actually, it makes total sense because we already did it on the live show. Well, that makes a lot of sense because when I was listening to the record, one thing that really struck me, even though, like you said, there's many different uh, songwriters with different influences, the energies felt the same in all of the songs. They're yes. kind of same, you know. Yes. Uh, so, so in in a sense, as you explained it, it's a reflection of what the live show was. So, did you try, did you try to capture that energy? Yeah, absolutely. That was the case. So that's what that's what Charlie wanted, and that's what, why he um, said, like, "Well, I want to listen to every idea you guys have. I want to, and I just want to channel it, channel it into something I experienced when I saw your life." Mm. And you, you mentioned this, uh, or um, you mentioned kind of the song, uh, songwriting, and one of the songs you worked on was "Best Time." Another song that you worked on, uh, or that you wrote, is "Angels." Now, specifically with "Angels." What was the starting point of that song for you? Um, ba basically, I just had the intro. It was like an intro idea, and I was singing on it, and I, I thought, like, wow, that's that's such a nice ingo, I I intro. And when if I if I um, if I want to raise it up to the next level, I I need to move up with the vocals, but I'm not able to do that, you know. <laughs> so because like I I'm having like this mid mid um, tuned voice, and then it would move up and I was like, wow, that would be perfect for Michael to sing it. You know, I was ju just imagine like the whole song fell into into place. I was playing guitar and singing and then I was kind of trying to do it with some falsetto voice. <laughs> and I, I send it to him and, I, and I'm told him, listen, this song, I think it's perfect for you. And then he called me back, hey, do you want me to sing like this weird falsetto voice? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I want you to sing your Michael Kiske thing, you know, just do your thing. And then he, uh, I, I recorded the whole demo, and then he he sent me his vocals on it, you know. Okay. And and so it was like one of the songs that was like finished very early. Okay. It was just so so easy going, and then um, yeah, and and best time it was a um, collaboration with Andy because mm -hmm. the, another there was another song I had basically finished, and what we did um, this time was normally you would go and write a whole song on your own. That's what we did before like Andy everybody has his home studio and Andy would be 
at, at his home studio. He would record guitar. He's a good guitar player too. So he would record guitar and programming drums and doing his vocals, of course. And mm -hmm. there you have it, like a full pre-production, you know. And I would do, do the same. So all the Halloween songs I've written have my voice on it, you know, <laughs> which is kind of funny. And Marcus right. and, and everybody does the same thing, you know. And then with Best Time, um, I was like, well, I have the vocals on my mind, but I don't want to record it because maybe you guys come up with something else. Mm. Like the whole collaboration thing we wanted to have on this record was the same thing. I, wa I wanted to have it more freely. And then um, when I sang and in my song idea, like I was just singing to him and I was like, oh, well, it's, it's actually nice, but I have another idea for the verse. And then I went like, okay, let's, let's meet tomorrow in the hotel room and, and record something. And so he showed up and then we would like switch parts and, and, and we would write like lyric ideas and stuff. So he came up with a whole other direction of the, of the verse. Right. Um, so we were like changing the bass guitar and the guitars and stuff like that. And I remember him when we were, were done because it was such a quick thing. I think we it went down like one hour or something. And then the mm -hmm. whole song was finished. He turned around to me at the door and was like, wow, that was actually fun. <laughs> so I, I, I knew instantly um, that it's going to be a good song, you know? So it was, it was just a great collaboration and I love that. Yeah, but like you said, as long as you're having fun, then it's also, I mean, then the, the yeah. music tends yeah. to be good as well, I, I, yeah. I hear. So and I always wanted that, you know, I mean, being, being on your own the whole time and recording everything, like uh, having everything on your mind, like an orchestra mm -hmm. and recording it down, you don't leave a lot of space for other people to get creative, right? Right. So. Well, you mentioned the lyrical, uh, discussing lyrical ideas as well. So when you wrote lyrics uh, as a band, or uh, even themes for songs, do you discuss them beforehand or is everybody very free in what they can talk about? Yeah, everybody's very free. I mean, of course, um, everybody knows what Halloween is about and that mm -hmm. we tend to write positive lyrics and that like the whole thing about Halloween is, I mean, that, that's probably um, why we're like at the border of being very happy with all the stuff we're doing, you know, but at the same time, we can be serious too. Um, is that we like, if you're, if you're writing songs and if you're, if you're a musician and touring the world and, and people watching what you're doing, I think you have a lot of responsibility too. So, um, and everybody in the band gets it. So that's, that's why we're, we're choosing subjects that are either funny or, or somehow critical, or sometimes for me, it's, it's all about having vibes, you know, mm. and we're not into, into negative, um, things, you know, we want, we want to spread a positive feeling with our music. So uh, to round this uh, this interview off, then now that and kind of to to end where we started, now that you don't have the ability to share kind of that positivity and to share that energy, um, at least not directly. You can do it online, but not directly. Uh, how is that different now? In a sense, did that change at all the way you approach the album, or did that change because it's a very like a, like we talked about earlier, it's very much a live approach to the album. So. Yeah, um, well, I mean, especially now, you got to know that we finished the album before the pandemic. Oh, happened. right. Fair enough. Yeah. So we, the, all, all these wrong songs were written, but for some reason, and I'm, I'm glad that we're, that we're always writing that way because the, the songs make sense. You know, having a song that says, like, I want to have the best time of my life makes totally sense now because you know sure. you, you gotta concentrate on positive things uh, i i've seen like in the last year i've seen like people going going nuts uh, mm. like friends of mine who went off to some i don't know what it is but they were like um asking re-asking their whole life you know sure and and going into a totally different direction and you go like hey stop it <laughs> Calm down. It's going to be fine at some point, you know, um, and and then having positive messages. I think that's what people need now. So and, and I'm glad that we're not doing negative stuff, you know, so um, and, and our live shows are that way, too. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, a lot of like cheesiness going on 
which is kind of kind of good, you know, because it's entertaining. You, you people have if you if you've been to a show, a show of ours, people are having fun, mm. you know, and that's and that's what it's about. In the end of the day, we're entertainers, and and we're like you know people going to have their nine to seven job every day, and they go to a show. They want to have fun, you know. They want to mm -hmm. get off like their daily thoughts and sorrows. So. I'm I'm just thinking like that it's that's what we can contribute as mm. a as a as an artist to 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 the world to people's life you know so with both kind of you as a band having uh, a lot of fun especially this uh, process this album process and the fans obviously will have a lot of fun can you see this um lineup uh, working together in the future is it, so is this just the start in a way of of course, I I hope so. I mean, you never know. It's people. You never know um, what's going on, and on everybody's mind. You know, I just hope because we're such a good family now um, that we stick together. And and I always was about if something works, you sh just should stick together. You know, I mean, and then also the whole tour was very successful, and 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 the vibe was very good. Why would you change that? I mean, I get if, if the vibe goes off or something or, or and someone isn't happy, then um, probably that falls apart. But I just don't hope so. Well, it sounds like you you are genuinely having a good time uh, with the band. So and, and that Absolutely. the rest are as well. So I, I can see good things in the future. Sasha, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank to you, talk too. With me. All right. Thank you, too.